I'm Lauren and welcome to another video from the Tiny Menagerie. Today I thought we'd take a look at some of my favourite tank inhabitants and they are ram's horn snails. Named for their vertically orientated shells that coil around much like a ram's horn, they're supremely common in the fish keeping hobby and I'm sure you've seen these guys either in other videos or just happily munching their way around someone's tank. Now there is something of a divide between those who love ram's horns and those who really do hate them and I fall very much into the first category and that's because to me these little snails are that perfect mixture of incredibly useful as they do such a fantastic job of keeping the tank clean from algae while at the same time they themselves have a very low bio load and at the same time they look really nice. They come in a range of different colours including yellow, orange, reds, blues as well as these sort of pinkish ones that I keep and they don't get too large, even a really good sized snail is only going to grow to be about an inch across. But what are ram's horn snails like to keep and what sort of setup do they need? First of all, ram's horn snails can be found all over the world, including temperate climates like the UK. We actually have our own native black ram's horn, but the colourful ones that you see in Aquaria are a tropical species and ideally need to be kept at a temperature that's 18 degrees C and above. They can survive at lower temperatures, but it will really stunt their growth, and it's not fair to keep them in conditions that they're not adapted to. They also need to be kept in neutral to slightly alkaline water, that's with a pH over 7. And this is because in acidic water it will actually eat away at their shells, which will significantly weaken the snail. Other than temperature and pH though, ram's horn snails are very, very adaptable to whatever type of setup you have. They can live in tanks as small as 5 or 10 litres, either with or without plants. And the only thing you need to bear in mind is that they primarily eat soft surface algae and tank debris. They will happily trek around your tank, constantly on the lookout for rotting plant or animal matter, and anything that they come across including fish or shrimp food or anything like that that's been left behind. They feed by scraping hard surfaces with their little rasping tongues, which are actually called a radula, and they are absolutely ravenous feeders, seemingly never-endingly on a quest for food. In fact, they are such a greedy species that it makes sense to give them as many surfaces as possible. The more surfaces you have in your tank, the more places that algae can grow, and the better fed your snail population is going to be. Starving ram horns will try to eat soft plants, such as Elodia densa or hornwort, for example, but live plants certainly are not their first choice of food. They would much rather eat nice soft algae because plants are just too tough for them. And so as long as you have a tank that has a strong enough light source to grow algae and it has plenty of surfaces for them to feed on, whether that's plants or, you know, a nice gnarly bit of driftwood or something, then your snails will be able to find plenty of food for themselves. Ramson snails are also very cheap to buy and a really good specimen with a nice strong base colour shouldn't be costing you more than a couple of pounds. They might not necessarily be available from local fish shops, as I say some people do see them as pests, but they can always be bought online. And so it is very easy to buy yourself a nice little starter colony. And when I say starter colony, I mean starter colony. One thing you may have noticed is that I haven't mentioned purposefully feeding your snails. And this is because I am pretty certain 90% of what a ram's horn snail eat comes out the other end as eggs. The more food they have, the faster they will breed, and in good conditions with plenty of food, their population can skyrocket in a matter of weeks. And just so you know, they are a hermaphroditic species, and so any two snails can breed. And they will do so long before they reach adult size. From about a centimetre in diameter, they are capable of reproducing, although the batches of eggs that they make at that age are going to be a lot smaller than those of a big adult, obviously. Ram's horn eggs are easy to recognise as these sort of blobs of jelly, and you can see from this image that on this one small patch of narrow java fern, there's actually five clusters of eggs. These two have recently hatched, and here are a couple of the baby snails wandering off. This one was laid more recently, and these two are ready to hatch any day now. You can see the developing snails in them quite clearly. And trust me, for every batch of eggs you can see, there are probably three or four more hidden amongst the plants somewhere. Ram's horn snails are prolific in the extreme, and so you tend to hear the same stories over and over about people's experiences with them. They say they bought two snails, and they ended up with literally a thousand a couple months down the line. And this is why a lot of people claim ram's horns are a pest or a vermin in tanks and something that you should avoid. It's because they have the ability to have this massive population boom when there's plenty of food around. 
But, and perhaps this is just me, I see them as something that just needs to be managed. You know that ram's horns are going to breed quickly before you buy them, and so you just need to make sure that you have an idea of what you're going to do with the unwanted baby snails. Personally, I keep the babies that I like the look of, that's any that have a nice strong colour or are showing any sort of different colour variation, and the rest of them either get fed to the wild birds or to my pet quail. I do sometimes sell them on as well, although that's not quite so often, so yes, I do sometimes find I have a huge number of snails, but they've more than paid for themselves with the few that I've sold on and none of them go to waste, and that way I never feel overwhelmed by them because I was prepared for this from the beginning. Of course, you might also want a lot of baby snails. If you're raising a snail-eating species of fish, such as pea puffers or many of the different loaches, or if you're raising assassin snails, who, funnily enough by their name, have a bit of a penchant for their own kind, in which case ram's horns are the perfect feeder snail for these species just because of how quickly they reproduce. Young snails are as easy to raise as their parents, and they have quite a good growth rate. By about three weeks old, I would expect them to be roughly half a centimetre in diameter. One of the really interesting things about ram's horns is that you can tell their health, and in some ways their history, by looking at their shells. If you look at this guy, for example, he is one of the first snails that I bought. You can see that in the centre of his shell there are these white patches, and this is a sure sign that this snail was suffering from quite a severe calcium deficiency when it was younger. Snails deficient in calcium can't grow their shells properly, and so they have these strange white deformities. And I'm willing to bet then that at this point in his life, he got sold on to somebody else. This person had a much warmer tank and a lot more food, because you can see just how fast this snail suddenly started growing. The shell is much thinner and much narrower here, and the rate of growth was much higher, which suggests plenty of food and a higher temperature. And then at this point it got sold to me. Now this snail is pretty close to as big as he's going to get, and so the shell hasn't grown much, but you can already see where it's starting to widen out, and this is probably because my tank is cooler than the last one that it was in. And I suppose all this just goes to show that if you do buy snails online as I did, and they arrive in poor condition, like mine did, then as long as it's not too severe, you don't need to worry too much. They will recover and go on to father and mother many, many, many hundreds of babies for the future generations. Joking aside though, I really like ram's horn snails. They're probably the easiest of all the aquarium snails to keep, and while some people might see them as pests, I like to see them as an ever-increasing number of pretty additions to my tanks. Just don't let them get out of control. Anyway though, I hope you've enjoyed this little video. Happy fish keeping everyone, enjoy those ram's horn snails, and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye!